Hi guys, welcome to Banter with Babs, where I talk about all things LSAT and law school. I've had a lot of friends ask me about what resources I use to score 175 on the LSAT, and that's not an easy question to answer. Granted, there are a lot of LSAT resources out there, lots of different pieces of advice on how to use them, what to use, what are the weaknesses and advantages of different strategies, but along my LSAT journey, I found three top resources that really helped me crack the 170s. The three resources I'm gonna be talking about today are the LSAT Trainer, Khan Academy, and Seven Sage, all programs that I personally had a lot of success with and that I really enjoyed using. For each of these programs, I'm going to talk about their style, why they were a game changer for me, and why they might be a good fit for you. All of the resources I talk about today are going to be linked below in the description box, along with some extra tips and tricks, as well as some articles to help you along your LSAT journey. On that note, let's get started. The first resource I'm going to talk about today is Seven Sage. If you haven't heard about Seven Sage, it's an online platform that gives you access to online tutorials and practice tests, as well as an online community for support. Seven Sage is a lean, mean, killing machine. It's actually what I started out my LSAT studies with. The overall style of Seven Sage is very thorough and detail oriented. On the Seven Sage website, at least from when I used it, they've had every question on the LSAT ever ranked by difficulty and explanations for each of those questions and why the answer is the answer. In terms of a spectrum of support, I really don't think there is any other program that provides more support than Seven Sage. Seven Sage was a game changer for me because it set a really solid foundation for logic. If you don't know what logic is yet, it's basically like a whole new language that you have to learn in order to master the LSAT. A lot of people don't have a solid background in logic unless they learned it from philosophy or mathematics, but for me personally, I had no idea what I was getting into, and Seven Sage was really helpful in providing a comprehensive foundation for understanding logic. Another reason Seven Sage was a huge game changer for me is because of their logic game tutorials. There's no one that can teach logic games like JY, the instructor on Seven Sage. In order to master logic games, it really helps to have everything represented visually, which is exactly what JY does on Seven Sage. When he tackles a problem, he sets up a visual apparatus that you can watch during the tutorial videos, and he guides you through how he solves the problem step by step. These videos actually used to be free on YouTube, but they were taken down a couple of months back with something to do with the L sack. So I believe the only way to access the videos now is through Seven Sage. Overall, Seven Sage is a really great fit for students who have zero background knowledge when it comes to the LSAT, someone who has a really high learning curve when it comes to logic or just really doesn't get logic games. I really can't recommend Seven Sage highly enough. Now, I personally didn't stick with Seven Sage the whole duration of my LSAT training, and that's because although Seven Sage is really lean and mean and has really great tools for logic games and understanding logic as a language, one thing that I really struggled with personally is finishing my LSAT practice tests on time. I think I almost never finished a section on time, and although Seven Sage had a lot of strategies for overcoming time obstacles, personally, as a type A learner who gets really bogged down in details, I needed a little bit of a big picture approach when it came to the LSAT, which brings me to my next resource, the LSAT Trainer. The LSAT Trainer is a manual that covers all the concepts on the LSAT. I still have my copy as you can see because I am just so attached to it. It was such a game changer for me when it came to studying and I have nothing but good things to say about the LSAT Trainer. The book covers all the concepts that you'll generally see on the LSAT, and it provides a couple of overarching themes, overarching strategies, and some categories for the types of questions you might find in logical reasoning. And one thing that the author, Mike Kim, emphasizes a lot in his book is that you wanna focus on the forest, not the trees. But overall, this book is all about flexibility and trying not to overanalyze the LSAT, because generally, you wanna be able to get in the zone and not overanalyze the day of the test. The LSAT trainer was such a game changer for me because after reading it, I was able to focus on the big picture and finally finish my sections on time, especially when it came to reading comprehension. I think the strategies that Mike Kim lays out in this book are so amazing for reading comprehension, and I haven't really found a program that came all that close to the reading comprehension strategies in this book. I highly recommend checking it out. If you're thinking about using the LSAT trainer for your studies, one thing to keep in mind is that it is made for the independent learner. It's not interactive like a website or an app. You really have to buckle down, read through the book, find time to do drills on your own, and follow a schedule on your own without someone holding your hand. But if you can manage that, the LSAT trainer is an excellent tool, and I can say it's highly recommended by top scorers, and I can see why. It's worked for me as well. 
All right, rounding out to my third and last resource, I'm gonna be talking about Khan Academy, the free LSAT prep program in partnership with LSAC. I mentioned earlier when I was reviewing Seven Sage that Seven Sage was like Khan Academy on steroids. Well, now that I'm talking about Khan Academy, I can say it's sort of like a beta version of Seven Sage. It doesn't have as many practice tests or tutorial videos or community to fall back on, but it is still a great resource, especially for being free. First and foremost, it is interactive and it actually changes based off of how you perform. So whenever I took a practice test on Khan Academy or when I did a drill, it would tell me immediately, here's what you need to work on, here's your strong points, here are your weak points. And that was really helpful for shaping my study schedule at home. Up until that point, I've been through Seven Sage, I'd used the LSAT trainer, but I still didn't really know what am I just not good at and what am I missing that I'm not realizing I'm missing. And Khan Academy did a really good job of showing me this, this is exactly what you stink at. You need to practice this more. And they really kept me accountable by reminding me every day, hey, you need to drill this, or hey, you have a practice test coming up, you need to study. It's really great if you're someone that struggles a little bit to stay consistent in your studies. Another thing that is really wonderful about Khan Academy is that it really emphasizes something called spaced repetition style learning, which I still to this day believe is the best type of learning. When you learn a little bit every other day, you're consistently practicing. You're not letting your memory fade by the time you review the material again. A lot of top programs use this, like Anki for medical school students. One thing that I really struggled with at the beginning of my studies is that I would study for like seven hours over the weekend and then not even think about the LSAT during the weekday and then study another seven hours over the weekend, but between one weekend to another, I really lost a lot of the knowledge that I gained the weekend before. I forgot a lot of the materials. I got a little bit rusty. It took me a little bit to catch up again by the next weekend. And so Khan Academy would send out reminders. It would help me set up a schedule. It reminded me what I needed to work on each day. It was really good about keeping my memory fresh up until test day. And Khan Academy is actually what I used up until test day that I scored my 175. It keeps you fresh, it keeps you fit, it keeps you ready to go. And most of all, it is incredibly easy to use. The website is very streamlined, it's very user-friendly. It keeps a record of all the practice tests you took in the past, what you did well in the past, and what you didn't do so well on in the past. Using Khan Academy allowed me to learn a little bit more about myself as a learner and what my true weaknesses were. If you're thinking about using Khan Academy for your LSAT studies, I would highly recommend you actually come to it first, see if it works out for you, see where you're still struggling, and then supplement Khan Academy with some of the other materials that I talked about earlier in this video. In conclusion, Khan Academy is a really great option for students on a budget and students who need a little bit more structure in their LSAT studies. And finally, in the couple of months before test day, I actually supplemented my Khan Academy review with forums. And two forums that I can't recommend highly enough are the Manhattan Prep Forums and the Power Score Forums. What I would do is after I took a test and I would do blind review, I would actually look up the questions on Manhattan Prep or on the Power Score Bible Forums and get the opinions and thought processes of other people on those forums. I think a really big key to excelling at the LSAT is start forming your own thought patterns and ways to understand questions that are unique to you. And reading the questions and answers from other people on public forums helps you build that network in your mind. So I would highly recommend checking out these forums to supplement your review from drilling and practice tests. I wanna be really honest with you guys here. My LSAT journey was anything but easy. There's so many things that go into studying for the LSAT and a lot of that comes down to stamina and believing in yourself. One thing that I want you to take away from this video is that you have the power to shape your LSAT learning experience. And a lot of that is based in learning more about yourself, learning about your learning style, learning about what your limitations are, what your strengths are as well. If it takes you a little while to find what resource works best for you, that's totally fine. Top scores don't happen overnight. They happen through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I encourage you to keep striving, keep fighting, and keep working towards your goals. If you found today's video helpful, please give me a thumbs up to support my new channel and subscribe for all things LSAT and law school. If you have any more questions about LSAT resources, studying for the LSAT, or if you wanted to share an experience about an LSAT resource that really was a game changer for you, please comment and share below. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.